objective. After reviewing this video, you'll be able to convert grams to grams, moles to moles, moles to grams, and liters to liters, and moles to particles. There are no vocabulary words, well, no new vocabulary words for this video. So here's the lesson of the day. So, did you know if you lived for a mole of seconds, you would live to be over 19 quadrillion years old? Mole map. So this map, uh, you can copy down in your notes. It'll make more sense as we continue through this video but it's basically showing you that you can convert from mass to moles or from moles to mass so no matter what you're starting with you have to go to moles before you can go to the other units so for example if I want to go from particles to liters I have to convert my particles to moles then I can convert to liters conversion table. Here's another conver uh, thing that you can record in your notes so that you have. So when I want to convert volume to moles, uh, every mole has 22.4 liters of gas. Okay, And then particles, when I want to convert that to moles, uh, uh, one mole will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules, whatever particle we're using. And then the last one, we want to convert moles to grams. We'll just use the one spot on the periodic table. And that will give you the mass of the element in grams. So if I looked at oxygen, I would see the mass would be 15.999. A lot of times we'll just use 16. Okay. Anytime we convert, this is a review, uh, we use the factor label method. Uh, we use the starting amount times what you need over what you had and after we fill those in we would multiply across and then divide by the new amounts so remember this uh, when we're doing these stoichiometry problems we want to go from grams to moles to moles to grams every time so we're always going from grams of compound one to moles of compound one to moles of compound two to grams of compound two. So if you always write this down to start with, you will be in great shape because well, I'll show you ways later that we can just cross out what we don't need. But if you always remember going from grams to moles to moles to grams, you'll do amazing. Okay. Um, so let's use an analogy. Uh, so we have a bike, which will be a compound one, and our TV, which will be compound two. So we got a bike and we don't like that bike so we're going to want to return it to the store for a TV so with that bike we want to return it okay now when we return it we find the store credit or we get a refund for that bike so money moles moles money okay then what do we do next well we have to find the price of the TV moles money money moles Okay. And then last, you buy the TV. So that's one way of go, thinking about going from your grams to grams. So when you take a bike back, you don't just take the bike, grab the TV. You have to find out about the money first. So you have to get the store credit, and then you got to look for the price of the TV, compare it, and then you can buy the TV. Grams to grams. So in this stoichiometry problem, we're going to convert from grams to grams. And so in the equation, N2 plus 3H2 yielding 2NH3, how many grams of NH3 are produced when you start with 25.0 grams of N2? Now we're going to use that setup every time, grams to moles to moles to grams. Okay, And we're starting with 25.0 grams of N2. 
what I like to do is I like to draw four different parentheses because we're using the grams to moles to moles to grams. Okay? And then we can just take our grams and bring it down. We can then take our moles, bring it down to the top, of, and take our moles, bring it down, and take our grams and bring it down. So you'll be doing that every time. Next, we need to know the compounds. Well, what the compound one is whatever you're starting with, and that's always associated with one with a number. So at 25.0 grams of N2, our compound one will be N2. Then we go from grams of compound one to moles of compound one, which in this case is N2. Then we go to moles of compound two, which in this case, moles of compound two would be what we end up with, which will be in this case NH3. And we'll end with grams of NH3. Next, what you do is you take the units of the previous one and always bring it down to the bottom of the next one. So I'm always going to bring down grams. In this case, I'll bring down grams of N2. And the next one, I'm going to bring down the moles of N2. And the last one, I'm going to bring down the moles of NH3. Next, you'll put in the numbers. So put down your starting amount, which is a 25.0 grams of N2. And then whenever I want to compare moles to grams, where do I look? The periodic table. And so for every one mole, I will have how many grams of N2? Well, nitrogen is 14. However, I have N2, so I have to have double that, so 28. Next, when I compare moles to moles, I'm always going to look at the equation, the chemical equation right here. And so moles of NH3, well, seeing now there's a 2 in front, I'm going to have 2 of them. And then with the N2, what number do I have in front? Since I have no number, that is going to be a 1. Okay. And then the last part, when we convert moles to grams, again, we look on the periodic table. And so for every 1 mole of NH3, I'm going to have 17 grams of NH3. Nitrogen being 14 and hydrogen being 1, but we have 3 of them, so 3 plus 14 is 17. Uh, you can cancel out the units of N, grams of N2, because we have one on top, one on bottom. Then we can cancel moles of N2 and moles of NH3. Next, we plug in all the numbers, so 25.0 times 1 times 2 times 17, divided by everything multiplied across on the bottom, so 28 times 1 times 1, which will give us an answer of 30.4 grams of NH3. Moles to moles. In the equation N2 plus 3H2 yielding 2NH3, how many moles of N2 are needed to produce 5.0 moles of NH3? So again, grams to moles to moles to grams. Uh, we are not starting with grams. We're starting with moles. So you can cross off the first grams. And since we're solving for moles, so how many moles of N2 are needed to produce? We don't need these last grams, so we can cross that one off. So now you just need two steps. So you can write down what you're starting with, so the 5.0 uh, moles of NH3. And the next moles that we bring down will be the moles of N2, because that's the compound 2 that we need. Uh, so what you need over what you have, you can take the units of the previous one, bring them down. And now how do we figure out moles of moles? We are going to look at the chemical equation. So NH3, we have two moles. That's where this comes from. And N2, we have just one. Okay, So we can plug those numbers in. So we have one mole of N2, and then two moles of NH3. And that should give us 5 times 1, which is 5, divided by 2. Give us a total answer of... 2.5 moles of N2. Moles to grams. Okay? So in the equation, 4Al plus 3O2 yielding 2Al2O3, how many grams of aluminum will combine with 1.50 moles of oxygen? So again, grams to moles to moles to grams. Write that down. Now, what are we starting with? Well, that always has to do with the units with the number. So in this case, we have 1.50 moles of oxygen. So we don't need this grams, so we can cross it off. So you should have three different uh, setups here. So we have moles of O2, and we have two more parentheses, one for the moles of compound 2 and for grams of compound 2. 
so we can bring those down. So moles of compound two, compound two is what we're looking for, grams of aluminum. So uh, aluminum is our compound two. So moles of alu aluminum and then grams of aluminum. Next, you can bring the units down. So moles of O2 can be brought downward and then moles of Al can be brought downward because what you need over what you have. So we have currently moles of Al and that can be brought downward. Next, we can figure out we can figure out the moles to moles. Well, when I'm comparing moles to moles, I need to look at the chemical equation. And so moles of Al, I have four. And moles of O2, I have three. And then whenever I compare moles to grams, I look at the periodic table. And so for every one mole, I should have 27 grams of aluminum. Now when I multiply everything across, I should get 162. Divided by everything on the bottom, multiply across, which is three. And 162 divided by three should give you 54 grams of aluminum. Now moles to particles. So how many particles are in 20 moles of H2O? So starting amount, 20.0 moles of H2. What we need is particles of H2O. And our starting amount is 2.0 moles of H2 because that's what we're told. Anything with the number is always what we're starting with. So what we had was moles of H2. So let's solve this. So moles so what you need or what you have we need particles of H2O what we have is moles of H2O it's brought downward and so for every one mole we'll have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles and so we just multiply the 2 times the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and we should get an answer of 1.2 times 10 to the 24th so our answer is 1.2 times 10 to the 24th particles of H2O. Next, moles to volume. So if 0 0.38 liters of hydrogen gas react with chlorine gas, what volume of HCl gas will be produced? So using the grams to moles to moles to grams formula, we can actually substitute out the grams for liters and that all had to do with the mole map way back in the beginning uh, so we can actually use liters to moles to moles to liters and so we need to know the equation so after you know solving it I put it down in the bottom right corner so H2O gas plus Cl2 gas yielding 2HCl gas okay now what we're starting with, we're going to write down. So 0 0.38 liters. I'll try to explain this a little bit differently this time. So next, we need to go to moles. Okay. So moles of H2, moles of compound 1, will be brought down. And then moles of compound 2 will be brought down. In that case, what we're looking for. And we're looking for the volume of HCl gas. And then the top units of the last one will be liters of compound 2 which is liters of HCl. Okay. Then you bring the units down from the previous one and so bring down the moles of H2 and bring down the moles of HCl. Okay. And I'm going to cancel these units so the final units will be the ones that are right here in the upper right. Now let's plug in the numbers. When I compare moles to liters, which is awesome about this one, is for every one mole of any gas I'm going to have 22.4 liters no matter what the gas is. Comparing moles to moles, we look in the equation. Well, moles of H2, uh, since there's no number in front, we should have 1. And the number in front of the HCl is 2. So we put the moles of H2. Now when we compare moles to liters, again, for every 1 mole, I have 22.4 liters of a gas. And after I do some math, multiply everything across, and divided by everything multiplied on the bottom across, I should get an answer of 0.76 liters of HCl. And here are some practice problems that you can do for the future.